Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the official kickoff for Lighting Up the Future, the Desert Goes Digital Community Engagement Series. My name is Dominic Papa, and I'm the Vice President for the Smart State Initiatives at the Arizona Commerce Authority. I'm gonna do my best to play your MC today and kind of move us through our agenda. The goal for the webinar was to frame the Lighting Up the Future vision, document, and understand how we can begin to build an integrated, unified, big and bold vision for the future of broadband and digital equity for all Arizonans. Specifically, you will hear from leaders with proven track records on current state, on the current state and extent of the challenge, the opportunity that lies ahead, and a high level overview of the key strategic pillars of the vision document. But a little housekeeping. So while this is specific kickoff event is webinar style, there will be follow on virtual workshops held around the state to enable a more robust and engaging dialogue with the community. Um, for today, please feel free to post questions into the Q&A section and please leverage the chat <coughs> to highlight the incredible work already being done and still to come. So before we get it kicked off, I would be remiss if I didn't say that we can never do this alone. Collaboration is our biggest competitive advantage. And I wanna thank our sponsors who have empowered us to launch this statewide community engagement series. So thank you, Worldwide Technologies, SRP, DEP, and Sicklu for your support. We look forward to working with you on these series. So without further ado, let's light up the future. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to our nonprofit host for this afternoon, Brian Dean, Executive Director for the Institute for Digital Progress. Brian, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for that introduction, Dominic. I am thrilled to welcome you all to this initial kickoff event of the Lighting Up the Future program, where we will seek to eradicate the digital divide that is plaguing our great state together. For those of you that I have not had the pleasure to meet before, my name is Brian Dean, and I'm the Executive Director for the Institute for Digital Progress, a local nonprofit organization that was created to work alongside our public sector and community partners to improve the quality of life in Arizona through the advancement of innovative technology solutions. Through this work, IDP and our incredible partners, the Maricopa Association of Governments, Arizona State University, Greater Phoenix Economic Council, Arizona Commerce Authority, and the Partnership for Economic Innovation have spent the last two years working together with the 23 local government organizations, which make up Greater Phoenix, to establish ourselves as a preeminent smart region in the United States via the formation of our smart region consortium known as the Connective. It was through these efforts, however, that we realized that if we ever hope to be considered a successful smart region, that we must become an equitable and inclusive region, ensuring that all of our constituents have the ability to access, adopt, and utilize for their benefit the technological tools and skills necessary for success in our future digital society. It's our belief that in order to achieve this big, bold vision that you heard Dominic speaking of for the future of our state, we must engage in unprecedented levels of collaboration with leaders from all sectors coming together under a unified and cohesive vision to not only eradicate the digital divide, but to also enable new pathways to success for all across Arizona. Along with our partners, Arizona State University, Sun Corridor Network, Arizona Commerce Authority, and the community leaders just like yourselves, the Institute for Digital Progress will focus our efforts to establishing the statewide digital equity organization, which will serve as the boots on the ground for convening our statewide coalition of the willing and advancing the connected initiatives, which we will be going over in more detail today during this call. Finally, I wanted to thank you all for joining us today, particularly as so many of you are already engaged in and leading some incredible work in this space. And our hope is that we can all come together to enhance and optimize all of our efforts by uniting, the, by uniting to light up the future for all of Arizona and establishing our state as a beacon on the hill to the rest of the world for enabling and empowering digitally equitable and inclusive communities. So thank you, welcome, and we look forward to getting the opportunity to work with you all. And with that, back over to Dominic. Uh, awesome, thanks, Brian. You know, that, that is expiring work. And now more than ever, do we need an organization that digital equity is not what they do, it's all they do. So uh, congrats on that pivot. Look forward to working with you. So I, I think we can all understand and are aware 
that there is a massive challenge before us. But at times, it's really difficult to fully understand the current state and extent of that challenge. <laughs> Lucky for Arizona, we do have one of the preeminent scholars in the country in the area of digital divide at ASU with experience in both some of the most urban cities like Chicago, but also rural America as well. So with that, I'd like to introduce Karen Mossberger, who is gonna talk about the current state and extent of the challenge we face here in Arizona. Karen? I'm Karen Mossberger, the director of the Center on Technology, Data and Society at Arizona State University. And I'm also a professor in the School of Public Affairs at the downtown Phoenix campus. So I do research on the digital divide as well as social impacts of technology use. And I'm pleased to see people in our state coming together to address these issues for connecting Arizona and lighting up the future. We reached a tipping point in March, 2020, when life moved online and millions of Americans were left behind for remote work and learning, online purchases, telehealth, job search, access to government and social services. And even as late as February of this year, census data showed that 75,000 households in Arizona still sometimes rarely or never had internet available for remote learning. About 26,000 more households in the state had internet only because it was paid for by someone outside the household. In most cases, that was the school district and likely that's just a temporary solution. These disparities not only affected the individuals that were involved, but had community level impacts. We saw urban schools that were unable to function because so many students weren't online, tribal and rural communities that lacked access to health or government services um, during the pandemic. Looking across the state, we can see from the most recent data from the Federal Communications Commission that there are fewer providers and less broadband in counties that are shaded in light blue here. You can see on the screen, for example, Apache County in Northeast Arizona. Um, but in a way, this hides some of the gaps that are within counties um, and some of these are even larger. For example, even in more metropolitan counties, even in more urbanized areas, we can see some places that are still relatively underserved. And this is for the number of providers or um, the availability of service. But this availability of service or the number of providers doesn't tell us how many people in counties or municipalities or neighborhoods have access to the internet at home, can afford subscriptions and can afford devices and can use the internet for activities like distance learning or telemedicine or remote work. The um, American Community Survey from the census does have data on broadband subscriptions. Um, this is from 2019. It's the most recent data um, from right before the pandemic. And we can see here, looking at the US as a whole, that 17% um, of the population in the US does not have any kind of internet subscription. And another 10% have uh, internet only on their cell phones. We've seen during the pandemic, the problems that that creates uh, for doing things like uh, distance learning or remote work or even problems for job search um, with only a phone and uh, that is the only internet connection. So 
my colleagues and I have called these mobile only or cell phone only internet users the less connected. And adding these together um, in the US, there's still over a quarter of the population, 27%, that's either unconnected or less connected. Arizona looks much like the nation as a whole. And as bad as that quarter of the population is that's digitally disadvantaged, if we dig deeper, we can see uh, greater disparities by place. Apache County, Arizona that I mentioned before, which includes part of Navajo Nation, we can see that over two thirds of the population there is either less connected or unconnected. Within Maricopa County, uh, the town of Guadalupe has 60% almost of the population that's less connected or unconnected. And there are census tracts within Phoenix um, in the Isaac School District, for example, um, that don't look much different from Apache County, where over two thirds of the population is um, unconnected or less connected. So we need local solutions to address these problems. These disparities are patterned by place, affecting whole neighborhoods, school districts, local economies, public health in a community. Um, but the problems and the barriers differ somewhat by place. Uh, in urban areas, the problem is really concentrated poverty and it's a lack of affordability for the internet connections. Often there is some availability of broadband in urban areas. Um, in some rural communities, there is a lack of infrastructure. Not all of them lack that infrastructure, but um, that's more common in rural areas. But poverty is also a problem there too, and the affordability of connections. So decades of market failure and policy failure have brought us to this tipping point. We have an opportunity. How can we make this moment count for meaningful change? It's really about the future of our communities. Some research that I've done with colleagues um, uh, that was funded by the National Science Foundation and is coming out this summer in a new book um, with Oxford University Press. That research uses data that we've estimated and collected um, nearly two decades worth of data where we can look over time at what the impact of broadband use is in communities. And we can see that as broadband subscriptions increase in a population, that that has a causal effect on prosperity in the community, on median income, and it doesn't matter if we look at counties or we look at the metropolitan level, we can see that causal impact of increasing broadband subscriptions and broadband use, controlling for other factors that affect local economies like um, the industry mix or education or demographics um, that still holds. This is true for urban or suburban or rural counties. It's this inclusive broadband use these subscriptions and use of broadband um, across the population, that matters more than just the simple availability of broadband, though that's important too, that's a first step, but we have to make sure that people can use it too. So what's needed going forward? We need policies that address the whole problem, including affordable connections and devices, we do need sufficient bandwidth for activities like remote learning and telehealth. So infrastructure is important, reliable infrastructure is important too. But we also need to make sure that people have the skills and the support to use the technology. 
or what's become fundamentally the ability to participate in society today for all kinds of activities, health and education, um, civic engagement for businesses. We also need to have data and evidence for policymaking going forward. We need to evaluate initiatives that are being undertaken to make to see what works and how this differs across communities and what's sustainable going forward. These are the needs that you're going to be addressing today. And what we do now has the potential to create a brighter future for all in our state. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. It becomes so much more powerful when you can see the data mapped out like that. I mean, it really starts to showcase the extent and current state of this challenge that we're facing. Um, and, and it's just remarkable to see the percentage of the population that can't participate in remote learning or our new digital economy. And it just really brings out the passion um, for, for what we're facing and gives us a better grasp on the challenge before us. So, so now that we do have that better grasp on the challenge that lies ahead, we can now kind of set our eyes and look to the opportunity uh, that presents itself to us. We have a once in a generation opportunity to apply for and win federal funding to address the broadband and digital equity challenges that Karen highlights uh, when she spoke. So again, lucky for us, uh, we do have a leader here in our state with a proven track record for success with the federal stimulus and creating a unified vision around broadband and digital equity. So to really discuss the opportunity that lies ahead, I'd like to welcome Lev Gonick, CIO of ASU. Lev, floor is yours. Thanks, Dom. Bill, thanks so much. Super, Supervisor Gates, thanks so much for joining us. And I know we're gonna tee you up in just a moment. If I could get, uh, there we go, a little bit of uh, control here and, um, Thanks, everybody. And it's so wonderful to have senior elected officials with us, uh, civic leaders, teachers, uh, superintendents, um, policy uh, leaders, uh, and folks at the grassroots who are all committed to the framework that takes a look at the whole, the whole gambit of broadband access through a very different lens, through the lens specifically of digital equity, which is really the tipping point that my colleague Karen Mossberger referred to. Um, and certainly this past year uh, has helped us to understand that this is not just about continuity of a regular march that began, you choose the decade ago, decades ago, but this is actually an inflection point where we understand that internet technology is not a nice to have, internet access is actually a social determinant of health. It's a social determinant of education. It's a social determinant of mobility. And again, through the lens of digital equity, this is a central goal for all of us, especially uh, at uh, Arizona State University that I'm going to briefly address and share with you with some slideware. I do wanna share with you that uh, I'm a relative newcomer to Arizona. I've only been here for about four years now. And as Dom indicated, uh, or at least implied, um, I've got some experience, maybe 25 years worth of experience in this space. And uh, really one of the secrets to um, our relative success uh, back in Ohio, which is where I came from, was actually what uh, Dominic and Brian have done along with all of the other coalition of the willing partners here, which is to assemble a broad uh, tent uh, and invite everyone under it, especially through the framing of digital equity uh, and inclusion, which is the framing for our work together. An integrated big idea about connecting all Arizonans, reducing the homework gap, reducing health disparities. That is a framing which uniquely positions us, as was my experience back in Ohio, to actually go after competitive dollars. as Many of you probably know because you're interested in this webinar and hopefully you'll be engaged in these 
uh, follow-up uh, interactive sessions coming up in the weeks ahead. As many of you know, there's a lot of federal money being spent on broadband. And really, in order to capture all of the broadband that we have, we have to realize that not all of it is being distributed by formula. Significant amounts in the tunes of tens of billions of dollars are going to be competitively put out. And it's been my experience that by coming together with an integrated vision, a vision that everyone can support, no matter which community you're with, no matter which school system you're affiliated with, no matter which city or town hall you're involved in, that you can point to, again, the vision of lighting up the future. Uh, that is a way that all of us uh, can actually go forward. And I share this in part because I think it's hugely important to have a shared vision. I also want to share with you that on the other side, the people actually giving the money out actually don't have the capacity to, to receive thousands or even just hundreds of applications for Arizona in order to adjudicate and review them in a timely fashion, because their imperative back in Washington, D.C. is to have shovel-ready projects underway. So this is actually a call to action of working together through the lens of digital equity to actually take some action. So if it's okay, I'm gonna spend the sort of second part of my, my sharing here uh, with a bit of um, a couple of slides if it's all right for me to share. I'm not going to um, spend a ton of time going back through many of the most important things that Karen Mossberger shared and that Brian Dean led with. But I wanna share with you that Arizona State University is committed to being a partner in this big vision and to making sure that Arizona actually secures more than its fair share, that we're actually on the winning team for addressing this work. And Karen spent a lot of time talking about the broad set of issues related to connecting the unconnected. But I look at it particularly through the prism of education. And we know that in fact, 60% of low income students have, have had to participate, uh, especially this past year, um, in online environments, not with broadband, but with their cell phones or through hotspots or through going to Starbucks or to McDonald's in order to actually participate, especially these last 14 months uh, along the way. And that is because they are either underconnected or unconnected as Karen outlined. And again, look, taking a look particularly um, at rural and tribal lands, uh, the numbers are astounding in terms of uh, folks without reliable uh, connectivity. And of course, you know, especially to those who are least fortunate uh, in our community. Uh, thinking about the challenges that we have, uh, if you are living homeless uh, in, in the Phoenix metropolitan area or, or, or in Tucson, the only way to actually get into public housing uh, in either of those uh, cities is actually by applying online. Uh, so we have a sort of systemic set of issues that I think are hugely important for us to be tackling together uh, along the way. And again, it's, this is, as Karen outlined, the challenges are not simply uniform. Uh, they divide out by, in lots of different ways around cultural lines um, and, and, um, and ethnic lines. And of course, uh, also around uh, issues around uh, poverty as Karen outlined. So from ASU's perspective, you know, again, we are by charter, I think hopefully most of you will know that ASU by charter um, is actually committed to being of service and committed to the success of the community. And we're particularly obviously committed to doing so through the lens of education and of course, partnering with others uh, for health and uh, part, uh, opportunity across the entire state. And working as we have very effectively on so many other issues facing Arizonans, partnering with the public sector, with small businesses, uh, and especially now a great opportunity to leverage uh, the many, many individuals who are committed to digital equity and inclusion to go after this big time in order to actually take advantage of, again, not only hopefully a coherent policy framework, but also a commitment to doing things together, to designing, building next generation networks that will support the connected, the needs of those who are not connected. You know, again, all about inclusivity, making sure that what we build can scale, um, and obviously focusing in on making sure that whatever we build is built to last. So uh, again, what we're proposing and, and we are working on is actually working specifically on um, the poor, uh, families who are um, eligible uh, for, for lunch and breakfast, 
uh, the families, again, living at or below the poverty line. Uh, that is, uh, unfortunately, still in, uh, in this 21st century, uh, in 2021, a large number of Arizonans. And our goal is, is, is to scale, is to work with from school districts um, all the way through hopefully working uh, with the so supervisor and others at the county level, and then connecting county levels uh, all the way up to a statewide effort. So I just want to conclude with just a couple of, of one example uh, of that small little pilot work that we've begun to do. Uh, and this is, a, again, a reference that Karen made in her presentation, working with really a, a community for whom two thirds of the community have no internet access uh, in, the, uh, in the area uh, of the Isaac School District. And to the left uh, is a picture of a, a set of homes uh, that is right across the street uh, from the uh, school, the Moya School, uh, which is across the street. It's a series of uh, trailer parks, uh, homes, uh, mobile homes that are out there. Uh, and again, our, our goal has been to figure out using ASU, using its technology, leveraging its assets, partnering with the school, partnering with the community, leveraging some of Karen's colleagues um, at the Watts uh, School uh, uh, that is in, uh, committed to social engagement is to provide high-speed, reliable, robust internet access that is equivalent to, if not better than, what most of us have uh, in our own either suburban or broadband experiences that we have. So for example, on the right-hand side, uh, you can see that this uh, household, uh, which has uh, four kids uh, who are at, uh, at the school across the street, who regularly tapped out on their hotspot every month, now have uh, reliable, symmetrical, uh, nearing 190 uh, megabits per second up and down along the way. This is sort of the level of the effort to get in motion uh, and to begin telling the story. Uh, again, Moya being one of them, uh, a series of other projects that ASU is involved with, involved working uh, also in Alhambra with refugee families uh, and working uh, hopefully in other communities uh, along the way to put in motion our commitment to leverage our assets uh, to then not only build out these little proof points, but to assemble these proof points into a coherent stra uh, strategy around how to access, supporting access, supporting adoption, and supporting the use of technology to advance individual members of the community, their families, and their common success. Thanks. Back to you, Doug. Thank you, Lev. You know, I thought a couple of things that you mentioned there that I heard over and over was, you know, supporting and building on top of each other, right? We're, we're in this challenge together. And so we have an opportunity as a state to really learn from each other and really grow and scale these efforts um, together, because I think it's only through collaboration are we going to get this done. So thank you, Lev, for your leadership, not only in, in those uh, proofs of concepts, but also bringing us your expertise to enable us to be successful as we petition to the federal government and, and build out that one integrated vision. So, so, so now that we understand the challenge from Karen and, and Lev mentioned it a little bit as well, and we look forward and we can see the opportunity, what might be an integrated, integrated and unified vision that will move us forward together? The Lighting Up the Future document initially drafted by a series of stakeholders, its goal is to provide a broad vision to finally solve the broadband and digital equity gaps in Arizona and can really galvanize a coalition of, as Lev mentioned, community leaders, elected officials, and private sector partners who want to see this problem addressed for decades and generations to come. So here to really frame the vision document and provide a high level overview of the different sections is Aaron Carr Jordan, head of social impact. So Aaron, over to you. Thanks so much, Tom, uh, and thanks, Love and Karen. It is an absolute pleasure to be here with everyone uh, this afternoon going into this evening. Uh, like Dom said, I'm Erin Carr-Jordan. I'm the head of social impact here uh, at Arizona State University. Uh, and I have been working in the social impact space, specifically focused on equity for well over a decade now. Uh, and I consider it a great honor and privilege to be able to use the skills that I have to now contribute positively to lighting up the future. And I'm thrilled to be here with you tonight to share the Lighting Up the Future vision. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, 
Okay, so lighting up the future, the desert goes digital. I thought it would be a good idea to just briefly level set and do a little bit of definition suggestion. So we have taken on the definition of digital equity that is digital equity is a condition in which all individuals and communities have the information technology capacity needed for full participation in society, in democracy, and in the economy. Digital inclusion, as you heard Lev mention, is the ability of individuals and groups to access and use the information in the communic communication technologies once they have them. Really, when I think about it, I think that digital equity is a making, about making sure that everyone, regardless of age, gender, race, ability, geographic location, culture, or any other variable can fully engage online. And digital inclusion is about having the knowledge and skills needed to use the technology effectively once they have it. This is about more than connecting the unconnected. Just for a minute, just take a breath, pause, and imagine an Arizona where every person is engaged and is actively participating, actively participating in shaping the future of the communities in which they reside. The pandemic has exacerbated inequalities that existed and has shown a light on the extent of the need for a statewide integrated vision to support Arizona's broadband needs. People who were struggling before were struggling even more. Kids who were behind at school have now been left behind and desperately need to catch up. The homework gap has widened. People who lack skills are now even further behind and vulnerable populations are even more at risk. These are the things that we have to contend with. So there are five basic steps that are purported to first get us there. First, we need affordable and robust broadband internet service. We need internet enabled and needs-based devices. We need high quality digital literacy and technology training skills so that once we have affordable and robust broadband service and devices, people have the skills that they need to actually be able to use them. Everyone runs into trouble every now and again, and we need to make sure that there is high quality technical support when those troubles pop up. And finally, we need applications and programming that promote self-sufficiency encourage participation and encourage collaboration. It's all of these steps together that create a vision in 2030 and beyond where everyone has an equal opportunity to thrive and we fully achieve the equity that we strive to. Here's what we know. The cost of exclusion from the broadband economy is massive. As many as a million Arizonans are unconnected or underconnected right now from schools, jobs and healthcare. Imagine that for a minute, kids who cannot go to school, kids who are unable right now because of the pandemic and many other variables to just access their education, whether they're in K-12 or higher education, people are being left out. The same thing is true for jobs. You hear often the 21st century workforce. The 21st century workforce is powered by digital, by technology. And if you can't participate, you cannot compete. So social mobility becomes inaccessible to a huge population. And finally, to healthcare. Think about how many people are vulnerable. People who were dealing with poverty, who when the pandemic struck, couldn't get access to healthcare, couldn't engage in telehealth, couldn't discern whether the information that was coming at them was good information or bad information. Being able to access information is the great level setter. So to make sure that everyone, again, has that equal opportunity, we need to make sure that everyone is connected. Starting today and over the next decade, Arizona's Lighting Up the Future will do a few things, and they are very important things. First, deploy world-class broadband network everywhere in Arizona. Second, connect every Arizona to that broadband. Third, and this is tremendously important, and I think it's one of the reasons everyone is here today, we will leverage the ideas and the passions of all Arizonans, and we will use that to improve the delivery of essential services, those things that we all use every single day. But we need all of us coming together collectively around this vision to do that. And then also we will create opportunities for every single Arizonan to participate in the growth of the broadband economy. To do that, we have a very important element and we will ask you at the end of today to participate in this. We need that coalition of the willing. I want everyone that's here to be part of this coalition of the willing. What that basically means is we focus on human impact, right? The human impact. We need an un 
unprecedented, never before coalition of civic leaders, of business leaders, technologists, educators, grassroots activists, all of us coming together to leverage our skills and our unique knowledge to bring them together to, to collectively, cooperatively address and overcome the challenges on behalf of all Arizonans, all Arizonans equitably. By 2030, there will be 10 million Arizonans living in a thousand cities, towns, reservations on 20,000 farms, and our kids will be attending more than 5,000 schools. That is a big ask, but collectively we can get there if we focus on the human aspect. Okay, so we know there's challenges. There are three big ones. There are three gaps. The first is the availability gap. And it is what it sounds like. It's really the operational gap that exists between the demand for services and the services that Arizona can realistically deliver on demand in real time. That gap is pretty big. To address that gap, we have to do a few things. First, the digital infrastructure corridors. And in these corridors, we were incentivized private sector investors to address the needs of underserved and unserved parts of the state through fiber and related digital investments that support commercial services and consumer needs, basically the things that, that we all use every single day. Second, Arizona's Community Anchor Network. The Community Anchor Network will follow best practices to support schools, healthcare facilities, local and state offices to enable world-cast broadband networks to serve Arizona's all through public services, the delivery of public services, excuse me. And finally, Arizona's public broadband service to connect the unconnected. This is a pioneering public hybrid option, leveraging new federal policy and encouraging community anchor institutions like universities to advance digital equity and inclusion, focused on serving broadband availability needs of the underserved and, un and unserved, including on-premises equipment. So ADIC, ACAIN, and connecting the unconnected make up the core of the vision for 2030. So how do we get there? To get there, we need a few benchmarks. We need benchmarks for personal wired broadband, for wireless broadband, for mobile availability, for schools and libraries, for classrooms. And at the end of it, every single school must have Wi-Fi or alternative options that are no more than one generation behind industry standards. Again, this is focusing on those places where it's most needed and creative systems where we can measure our impact and measure our success. The second gap is the adoption gap. The adoption gap is really the gap between availability and use in homes. The adoption gap is massive. It is currently three times larger than the availability gap. It disproportionately impacts the poor, the elderly, and the disabled. Millions of Arizonas have broadband available to them, but they have yet to adopt it in their homes. And the two primary causes of that are it's not affordable and they're not digitally ready. So we have to address both of those things. First, to address digital readiness, we have to create systems that enable everyone to acquire the skills they need. And this is particularly important to find information to evaluate that information, to be able to discern whether that information, again, is, is good information or whether it's inaccurate information, to also create, and then to be able to communicate that information outward. There are five core components that, that help us achieve this digital readiness. First, we establish Arizona Digital Readiness Cores, Navigation Cores, excuse me, in partnership with schools, colleges, universities, libraries, tribal association, and community organizations to help people solve a wide range of adoption issues. There is no mistaking how complex this is. And so we need people with diverse skill sets to come together again to help navigate it. Second, we need to establish, and this is the very important piece that Dom, Karen, Lev, Brian, everyone already touched on. We have to fund these things. We need to be able to fund training programs in Arizona's public housing communities, in partnership with community colleges, and as part of education and workforce development efforts. And the funding needs to cross this and all of the other aspects of what we're talking about today. We also need to establish a digital literacy program at homeless shelters, in food kitchens, in reentry programs, the places where it is most needed. 
We need to help those in transition gain the skills that they need to apply for public housing, for workforce training, and to maintain social communications. Going back to that idea of digital equity, which means everyone is fully engaged socially, economically, and in democracy. This is a big piece of that. Fourth, we have to leverage existing programs for military and veterans. We can focus on digital workforce boot camps, marketplace adoption, and we can match veterans with workplace digital skills that they need to thrive in the 21st century. And finally, we establish a new American program in partnership with churches and community organizations to support immigrant absorption and enculturation needs focused on families. After we address the digital readiness gap, we have to address affordability. The vision for Lighting Up the Future supports the revamping of the Federal Lifeline Program. That program was originally intended to make sure that every American home had access to a phone. The revamping of that is to make sure that every American home has access to broadband. For us, we'll focus on Arizona and then contribute more broadly. We also need to establish systems that enable those in greatest economic need to get broadband, to get products, and to get the services that they need to support them. And finally, the vision supports a public option for broadband service. And then the one that I think we can focus on most, utilization gap. And this is how we leverage that coalition of the willing, regardless of what sector you're in. We need you, we need your skills. <laughs> we will strategically leverage K-12, workforce development, higher education, healthcare, civic engagement, and civil services, excuse me, citizen services. In K-12, we will eradicate, eradicate the homework gap via broadband access that adopts, supports, and engages teachers and support staff with the training that they need to thrive. We must partner with Arizona Schools of Education and teachers colleges to advance equity-focused technology-enabled modalities of teaching. We know that students can learn equally as well online, but if they don't know how to use the equipment and they don't have the support structures and their teachers aren't trained to enable them to do that, then they are missing out. That is something that we can attack and overcome. We must invest in culturally responsive and relevant online learning tools with a particular focus on partnership opportunities with tribal communities. We must improve access to educational experiences that improve technology skills. And here is a question that was in the chat before. We have to measure and document improvement. We have to find and measure KPIs and iterate when things aren't working. We have to be nimble, but first we have to set a plan we have to start measuring and we have to document how learners are doing, particularly focused on those in, that are considered vulnerable, those in, in at-risk communities. In workforce development, we have to expand access to digital resources and technology assistance in neighborhoods, in rural areas, and tribal reservations, and in communities of color. I wanna, I wanna say that again. Workforce develop, which, which gets to the heart of how do we prepare everyone to thrive in the 21st century workforce? How do we make sure everyone has the skills and that so social mobility is really an opportunity for all, that it is equitable. We have to focus on these neighborhoods in those rural areas where people have less, where they are exposed to less, on tribal reservations, like where, where Karen pointed out, where so few people currently have access and there is so much lift that needs to be done. And in communities of color, where systemic inequity continues to persist and there is greatest opportunity. The Department of Economic Security, city, workforce programs, tribal governments should develop broadband related apprenticeship programs. States and cities should provide incentives to create and scale new workforce digital skills programs. The Department of Economic Security will increase and improve data collection related to workforce development. And DES should mod excuse me, modernize their unemployment benefits and systems to offer access to employment. And healthcare, and I think several people have touched on this today, we have to ensure that everyone has access to the tools that they need to get quality healthcare services. People need to be able to thrive. They need to be able to feel good to get good medical, inf medical information. Systemic poverty impacts health, period. The correlation uh, is significant. So without healthcare, few things can change. So this is a tremendously important priority for us, making sure that everyone has that access. We will leverage the Lighting Up the Future Coalition to design and support the healthcare needs of all Arizonans. And we will fund the programs that support digital healthcare infrastructure, digital health literacy, and workforce diversity. 
and we will aggressively pursue FCC's connected care pilot and telehealth programs to focus on improving the health outcomes for low income communities and again communities of color. And DES, AZDHS, the state and the counties need to make sure funding is allocated to develop, to recruit, and retain healthcare professionals from underrepresented groups. You can't be it if you can't see it. So we need to make sure that everyone achieves their highest potential. Higher education, and this one is particularly important to me and to many people who are here. Arizona universities and colleges have some of the best broadband networks in the world. That is undeniable, but we are a grossly underutilized resource for improving digital equity and inclusion. Community college in this state are providing national leadership for, te for technology driven future of the work efforts through the reskilling and the recovery network. And R&D aimed at approving teaching and training are grossly underfunded. In our vision, we will position higher education as a statewide asset for using broadband to address public needs in education, research and development, healthcare, transportation, economic development. We will use university resources to help institutions to better serve disadvantaged individuals and their communities. We'll leverage community college programs such as Technology and Innovation Workforce Development Fund and the Arizona Advanced Technologies Network to address workforce upskilling demands and reskilling demands. Because some of the skills that you already have, you just need to up them so that you're ready for the jobs of the future. Discerning the difference between that two becomes tremendously important. And when you properly fund it, you can do that. We'll focus on research and understanding how digital education can improve outcomes and eliminate persistence performance gaps. One of the great pieces of having higher education as a partner is that we are good at doing research and we can identify benchmarks and we can measure performance and we can get to those KPIs that again were addressed in one of the questions from one of the guests here today. We can also promote those best practices for using digital education to build equity, equitable and inclusive societies. It's tremendously important to identify those best practices and then share them widely. The more people know what best practices are, the more likely they adopt them. And then the more people we're able to help both within the state of Arizona and beyond our borders. And then we can increase our efforts to identify, develop, test and deploy applications of digital education tech that foster economic, social, most economic and social mobility with an eye on that, with that as the goal in mind. Citizen services allow us to focus on connecting the unconnected low income and minority excuse me, communities to improve online access to state, county, and city public service. But we need to make sure that government websites are optimized for mobile use. Some people, that's all they have to access that information. If they're not optimized, they don't work for everyone. And that isn't equitable, which is our overall goal here for the vision of 2020, 2030. We'll launch an Arizona-wide digital trust campaign inclusive of digital spaces for citizens to access and control their government held personally identifiable information. Trust is a very big deal. And if people don't trust us, it's, it's kind of a problem. So we need to make sure that this is woven tightly through the model, that there is an actual digital trust campaign that enables everyone to access their own information. So they have a sense of control and a sense of power will improve automated online government support and will accelerate the digitization of forms, data entry, signing, submissions, those things that we all use every day that we need to make sure everyone can use every day. And then finally, civic engagement. Lighting up the future will support the work of the connective. And I'm sure Dom is happy to have you look at the connective, learn more about it, to learn more about the Institute for Digital Progress. The work that they are doing across the state is absolutely amazing. And the work that they have done to bring together consortia and, and collectives across sectors will be an absolute imperative to leverage, to leverage for the benefit of lighting up the future. Our blueprint embraces the build out of wireless and wired infrastructures and the development of service and operational models that provide the most community value. Working with the community is the only way to know if you're adding value. It is deeply woven through this vision and through this model. And the connective and IDP will provide a reference architecture and a playbook for deploying community networks to unserved and underserved communities across Arizona. So that was a lot of talking that I just did, but I'm gonna leave it with one very important piece here today because we are lighting up the future and we did talk about the coalition of the willing. So I say, if you came today, you're already willing, right? I mean, that's the assumption that I'm making. So join us. And 
I think we will have a way for you to do that immediately. But as we start to move this vision forward, we want all of you to take part of it. We need all of your passions. Uh, and so thank you very much for being here today and thank you for listening. Thank you, Aaron. That was incredible. I, I understand there's a lot more depth and details to be figured out, but that was absolutely perfect overview. Thank you so much. As we mentioned, in order to achieve these ambitious goals, as Aaron just said, and set out that, that are set out in this vision document, it's gonna really take an unprecedented coalition of, of leaders. And it's also gonna take forward looking elected officials uh, as well. So here to provide concluding remarks is Supervisor Bill Gates of Maricopa County. Supervisor Gates, the floor is yours. Oh, thanks so much. And, and what an amazing, uh, meeting this afternoon and there's so much energy and, and thanks for inviting to me me to be a part of this you know I, I'm just thrilled to be spearheading this effort Dom with you and with Lev this lighting up the future the digit uh, the desert goes digital um, I mean it's really as we've talked about today an incredible way to finally solve the, the broadband gap that we all know is out there you know and it's both in rural and urban areas in my district my supervisor district, I have both rural and urban areas, and they're both still challenged with this broadband gap that's out there. I mean, for me, this is not a kind of a, a new uh, passion for me. As Don knows, you know, I've been focused on tech adoption, smart government, and, and broadband expansion for many years. Back when I was chair of the Board of Supervisors in 2019, we had a goal to provide as many services as we could, uh, county services through digital means so that we could use technology to run county government more efficiently. Little did we know at that time that we were just, uh, you know, a few months away at the beginning of 2020, where we had to see just how far we could go in being a digital county. Uh, and so we're, we're grateful for that. But, uh, you know, most of us, uh, most of you guys know um, that this gap is out there, both in rural and urban landscape. And it's something that we've all been trying to focus on for years. But with COVID-19 and the major transformations that we've had to go through in a short period of time, we now know more than ever how important access to the internet is. And also, you know, how sort of tragic the gaps are uh, when we do have those in access to broadband. We had it, we saw individuals and communities that were left behind because of that, simply because they couldn't connect to reliable internet service. We heard the stories earlier about kids going to McDonald's and Starbucks, you know, to try and make these connections to, to wireless. And that can't be the way that we're going to move forward into the future. Um, we understand that not only this is a challenge in Maricopa County, but it's really a challenge across the, the globe. And we can't do it alone. There's no one group that can accomplish this alone. We all have to collaborate. That's why I'm so grateful to the Connective. That's why I'm so grateful to everybody who's participating uh, in this meeting today. Uh, we know that workplaces and classrooms are only going to increase their virtual footprints moving forward. So again, we know because of that, the addressing these gaps to not only broadband, but also to digital literacy uh, training is so important. But we do have a path forward, thank goodness. Again, due to Dominic's uh, leadership and Lev's leadership, we've been able to form a coalition of community leaders, elected officials, and folks from the private sector who want to see this problem addressed for generations to come. We really do have a once in a decade opportunity right now to apply for and win federal funding to address our broadband needs. And it's uber important that we do this with one voice. Lev knows that as well as anybody, and, and I'm grateful for his leadership. So I've called on other elected officials, community leaders, and private sector partners to sign on to the vision document that we've created. Now really is the time for us all to come together and ensure that Arizona doesn't have one single student or a worker without access to reliable uh, internet, and that our economic future is ready for the digital age. So again, Don, thanks for this opportunity. And thanks to everyone who's participating in this extremely important endeavor. Thank you, Supervisor Gates. That was an incredible conclusion. And we really appreciate your leadership in this area. We, we know we're gonna need it. Um, as you can see, uh, the passion's there. Let me just share my screen as we uh, move towards next steps. 
Thank you again to our sponsors. So, uh, you know, I, I think as you can feel from Supervisor Gates, the passion's there, the coalition is building and, and we're excited to light up the future together. So the next steps are important to understand and, I, and I'll be respectful of your time. So we'll wrap up here, but all this information will be on our websites. We'll be po posting this out to the attendees as well. So you can become involved. So the coalition is planning on hosting virtual workshops around the state to listen and gain feedback. Here are the list of dates in the specific topic areas for each workshop. Uh, so again, uh, take note of where you could register, but again, this will be posted and, and shared widely with the coalition. Um, however, you know, as I think a lot of people mentioned today, we, and that I've seen in the chat, you know, we know that no one can do this alone. And there's already a lot of tremendous work currently being done. The purpose of lighting up the future, as you heard Supervisor Gates, Aaron, Lev, Brian, Aaron, it, it's, it's to be additive, right? It's to build, it's to support and it's to begin to really coalesce these various efforts. So that way we can work together to, again, as Supervisor Gates mentioned, develop an integrated and unified approach. For example, here are some programs I highly recommend you checking out. And I think Steve and Mark have posted a lot uh, in the chat about the task force, but there's also shaping you to use a broadband initiative as well. So I put a, some, some contact information here for you to reach out, uh, try to get involved in their efforts as well. And if you have your own efforts, your own initiatives, I know Phoenix, the city of Phoenix is doing a digital equity effort. City of Tucson is doing a digital equity effort. If you would like to plug in, please reach out to us. So that way we can start to really, again, develop the coalition, bring more investment, bring more resources and bring more capacity to all of our efforts. So that way we can succeed together. Ultimately, we're gonna be stronger together than we are apart. That's, that's ultimately what it is. And so with that, I'll just remind everyone again of the next series of roundtables immediately coming up and ask you to help us spread the word and help us bring the communities, the partners, the citizens to the table to have a robust and exciting conversation. So with that, I just want to thank all of our speakers, Supervisor Gates again for a terrific job today and a special thanks to all of you. As Aaron mentioned, you're already part of the willing, you're already part of the coalition. Let's do this together and let's make Arizona one of the forefront leaders and broadband and digital equity, not only in the country, but around the world. So let's build up this coalition and let's go light up Arizona's future. Thanks everyone, have a great day and we'll see you soon.